John Dewey is believed to be the most influential man in the whole area of public education. He uh, went to Russia in 1928 to help study the Karl Marx way of education, bring it back to America. Dewey was a, an atheist. He was a, a socialist, a humanist. He was part of the Social Society in America, helped found that. What he believed in was that education should socialize the child to make him uh, a, a willing tool of the state. It might be surprising to some that the man who is still idolized as the father of public education in America is the very man who did everything in his power to dumb down our children so that they would willingly accept his vision of a socialist America. It started with Dewey in the early 1900s. It expanded, um, really expanded since the 1960s. The hard left gets control of the teachers unions and the training colleges. If you've got those two institutions, you can pretty much dictate all educational policy. The people who were uh, demonstrating against our country and against our government in the 1960s have now become tenured professors in the universities. So they're the ones who are writing the textbooks, uh, teaching the teachers, uh, running the teachers' colleges. And it's self-perpetuating, because once you have the universities, then you train more cadres and more and more and more. And they discovered that they could uh, do more to remake our country by going into the schools uh, than they could by throwing bombs. I believe the average patriotic American underestimates the importance and influence education has on their children. That's how the large majority we had in 1980 to elect Ronald Reagan in a landslide has been lost. It's not because the other side has had lots of children. No, they're aborting theirs. But instead, they're capturing ours through the propaganda they teach them, seven hours a day for 13 years, and even longer if they attend college. We are losing most of our children to the other side because of the anti-American, anti-God, and anti-free enterprise rhetoric they are filled with in the government schools. Government schools are not teaching basic reasoning processes. They're not teaching logic. They're not teaching actual data of history and science and mathematics. And if your education is rather limited, then you're inclined to believe that government can be the solution to your problems. When you look at the desks in the schoolroom, you'll find four together or maybe a table, they sit around a table. Independent desks are very rare in most classrooms because they don't want to promote the self-sufficiency, independent mindset. You go back to William Z. Foster in his book, Towards Soviet America, you will see how uh, he has whole chapter there on how we have to supplant education in this country and ultimately force every student to attend public school. That's the other thing. I hope the homeschoolers get, catch on to this. The homeschoolers and the Christian day school movement are going to have some very rough times ahead of them because the public school crowd it cannot afford to have any competition. And they're, having, and they're being given plenty of competition by the homeschoolers right now. You see the effects of that lowered educational standards. There's no more studying of the classics or studying of the civics or you know, how the U.S. Constitution was formed. It's, it's all progressive education. It's all based on the identity politics, the isms, the current trendy isms, environmentalism, racism. They're training them for the collective and a collective mindset and a dependency mindset. And it seems that they, again, want to have people be uneducated, so then they do become wards of the state. They're dependent on the government to provide everything for them. It's under 10% of kids believe that, that there is an absolute right and an absolute wrong. And how, why are we surprised? We've sent our kids into this government system that indoctrinates them, that teaches them about tolerance and diversity and multiculturalism and not about reading, writing, and arithmetic, not about what our founding fathers had to say. It's, it's consequences. Few would argue that the education the children are receiving in the public schools is pathetic at best. But with the amount of tax dollars we spend each year, 
over twice as much as it would cost to send the students to private school, why do we allow this to continue? The group that my investigation led me to that seems dedicated to making sure the children don't get a good education was a real shocker. The uh, schools are, are pretty much controlled by the teachers union, the National Education Association. If you look at their platform and goals, uh, you would think they were a socialist or almost communistic organization. They are for the entire feminist agenda, uh, starting with abortion on demand, tax-funded abortions. They're for the whole gay rights agenda. Uh, they're for the whole globalism agenda. They are extremely anti-parent. It, it, it is an effort to get the children to abandon the values of their parents. National Education Association has no uh, patience, tolerance, or use for traditional teachers. They're looking for people who want to be agents of change. They want to throw out all the lessons of history. And really, it's an attempt to then impose their own views and ideas onto people, get them to act as activists. If you control those institutions, then you can control everything else. It's all public schools, all for their jobs, and they have gotten behind all of the radical kinds of curriculum that's being introduced. They're for it 100%. They've had a tremendous effect on public education. It's not positive. We also see immorality being promoted through our schools, the kind of sex ed curriculum that is being used and paid for with our tax dollars would shock most parents. I think one of the main problems we face is parents naively thinking that the schools are the same today as they were when they were young. They don't realize there is a battle going on in this country for the hearts and minds of our children. The game is between 15 and 25 years of age. That's the whole game. If you're over 25, the chances are they're gonna put a few pennies towards you to corrupt you. But their game right now is to corrupt the 15 to 25 year olds or less. And right now they're down in the first grade with Heather has two mommies, daddy's roommate, uh, gay pride parade, and now by eighth grade they'll pass out condoms and school colors because that's so patriotic. And it's perfectly obvious that you get a hold of the child early, you can change his values away from his parents' values and get him to follow you. And they're very open about saying that. The National Education Association has passed a resolution saying they want children from birth. Isn't that interesting? The Communist Manifesto also thought the state should take control of children at birth. The left has always been good at disguising their real agenda by coming up with phrases made from words we are very familiar with, but then giving them new definitions. Social justice is the current phrase of choice and is being used to teach children the failed Marxist ideas of yesteryear or what they should strive for today. We see social justice curriculum today, which is the buzzword for communism, socialism, Marxism, which Bill Ayers is teaching. It's in many of our colleges, and the social justice curriculum is being taught in high schools all over the nation. Justice is good. If you then start calling something blank justice, then you're modifying it. And what it really means is, I think, taking from one group of people and giving to another group. So I would call it socialisms and it's used to uh, break down the differences between the way things are done and the way it should be done. So when they're teaching social justice in the schools, they're not talking about free enterprise and capitalism and individual self-responsibility, all the things that made America great. They're talking about the things that made, it, made Europe and the Soviet Union and China so bad. The longer we allow our schools to teach the children that America has so many faults, it's not worth saving, instead of the fact that even with its faults, it is the greatest country that has ever existed, the less chance we have of ever turning our people back from the dead-end road we're currently on, a road that promises to give us a perfect world if we'll only give up our sovereignty and our freedom. you're going to find more and more of the following. This is now called a world pledge. We no longer want the Pledge of Allegiance 
to the flag of the United States of America because that is considered nationalistic. And of course, the socialists, the communists, and the Marxists and the extreme left wing in the country uh, want nothing to do with it. I pledge allegiance to the world, to care for earth, sea, and air, to honor every living thing with peace and justice everywhere. This came out, first of all, in Superior, Wisconsin. So Superior, Wisconsin was their guinea pig, and there was very little uh, set against it, and so it would then go to the next and the next and the next, and before long you'll have the whole school system standing up saying, I pledge allegiance to the world instead of I pledge allegiance to the U.S. The public schools right now, if you'll read towards Sylvia and America, have nearly accepted every item that William Z. Foster said we needed to place into the public school curriculum. And we're seeing the results, you know. People are not as informed as they once were. They think in different ways, and they think in the way that the left intends them to think. Antonio Gramsci realized that if you can take over the institutions and the culture, you will be able to use those to influence society to create the socialist man you want. I think the most brilliant part of his plan was that he realized you could not only create a man that wanted big government to take care of him cradle to grave, but, and this is the genius of Gramsci, you could create a man that needed big government to take care of him cradle to grave. A man so dumbed down and so minimized in society, he wouldn't have the intellect or character to take care of himself. The reason this is so deadly for America is that once we have a certain percentage of the population in that category, our limited constitutional form of government is no longer possible because too many people won't be able to exist in that framework. We are approaching that tipping point rapidly.